two games remaining. The top of the table is rather congested. I mean, it's almost like knockout rugby from this weekend on for Leinster, isn't it? Yeah, you know, there's obviously things aren't cemented. Um, there are things to play for. Um, you know, aside from the competition we're involved in, um, I'm sure some guys have got one eye on getting into the national team. Um, you know, especially with uh, with it being a Lions year, etc. So, um, yeah, I think there's plenty to play for, to be honest with you. And obviously internally, making sure that we've got little goals um, to aim for, uh, certain areas that we're looking to improve. Um, and it's a bit of a funny situation where, you know, the season sort of is finished, but there's a there's a competition. So we've, we've got a couple of games to try out a couple of ideas, building up towards next season, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, without being silly about it, really, obviously. So, um, but you need that. I think you've got to sort of stimulate the players so that they're looking forward. They can see um, there's worth in what we're trying to do, um, so that they they have buy-in and they sell themselves to it. So, um, yeah, it's a strange situation. But you know, in fairness to the boys, their, their attitude has been spot on. So, you know, we need to, we need to take that into the, the remaining games now. But you know, Ulster, Connacht, I thought they were they were good performances. And you play a team this weekend, Glasgow, who are in a position where, you know, they have something to play for as well. And Leinster and Glasgow matches have been quite competitive the last one. Yeah, exactly. Um, made the point this morning, you know, that in all the Pro 14 matches that we lost this season, uh, we lost them to a team that has something to play for. Um, you know, even the Ospreys fighting for um, Champions Cup um, to qualify for that competition, etc. So... Similarly, Glasgow, you know, they're still in the hunt. I think they're third in the table, so um, they'll be chasing a bit of silverware as well. So it, it'd be a good test for us um, to see if we can match that edge, really, um, and go there. And as you say, they, they've been tight affairs, really, uh, between the two teams. So, uh, and I'm sure they'll be they'll be looking to, you know, to get the balance a bit more their way as well. So it'll be a big good good contest for us. Now, I know that you and I could sit here for the rest of the evening and talk about scrums, our line-outs, so and we're not going to do that. Um, can can you talk about Michael Bent? We, we had a chat with him just before you. I mean, he leaves Leinster um, you know, at the end of the season. In many respects, it's sort of an old-fashioned prop or an old-style prop. What sort of an influence has he had on the younger players that have, uh, that have come through? Excellent. Uh, you know, one of the one of the things here is up on the wall everywhere uh, with regards to driving the legacy. And um, you know, Bentley's obviously he's driven his own legacy, really. Um, especially when some of the international players have been away from here. You know, I've re relied pretty heavily on him because of his experience. Um, he's a great man. Um, got bags of of uh, uh, knowledge to hand down to the to the youngsters. So. You know, if, if you're a young loose head who's coming in opposition and a, and a hooker, um, you're learning because you're getting that feedback instantly that you haven't got it right if you're going back. Uh, similarly to the second rows behind him, etc. You know, so the, a wealth of knowledge, really. And, um, you know, he's, he's imparting that knowledge on a regular basis. So it's been great. Uh, he's made my role here, you know, a lot easier, um, especially in those international windows. So... He's definitely left a legacy behind him of of how to go about things, you know, and um, you know, just just having that hunger for a scrum, you know. You said about an old fashioned sort of tight dead mindset wise. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, you've got to do your bread and butter first, and uh, you know, th there's nobody better than than Bentley for that, you know. Um, yeah, he's a good man. Uh, he he will be sorely missed. No doubt. Cheers, Matt. Good to see you again. Thank you. Hi, Robin. Ash Nate here uh, from Virgin Media. Uh, Robin, just on Johnny Sexton, so we got the update that he's returning to contact training this week. Um, is Friday likely to come too soon for him, though? Uh, sorry, let me just refer to my medical notes here. Uh, Johnny will continue to develop contact in training be further assessed through the week. Yeah, so... You know, he's done a bit of contact today and we'll just reassess uh, as the week goes by, really. Um, it's obviously a short week, so we're training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday. Um, so we'll, we'll see how see how the week pans out, really. Um, today is our main, uh, sorry, tomorrow is our main working day. Um, 
So, yeah, we, we can just step things up with regards to, to the level of contact and um, tomorrow and we just keep on assessing the situation. Yeah. And just from him around the place as club captain, Rob, and, you know, and after the disappointment of the Lions, like, is he desperate to get out playing again? How, how is he? Yeah, he's been good. I mean, um, like I said earlier, it's it's given us an opportunity with having a couple of games left this season um, to sort of build on the season that, that has been. It's, it's a very strange situation. So, you know, you can reevaluate uh, some of the off-field stuff as well with regards to our values, with regards to our training regime, um, small little things that we can that we feel we can improve on ahead of next season. Um, so we, we're doing that with, with next season in mind, but we're getting in a little bit earlier. So, you know, sort of Johnny's standing in the group, um, you know, as captain, etc. Um, he's got a major role to play in that. So he's engaged in that process along with the the other sort of um, leaders in the group. Um, so it's not as if he's around you kicking his heels. He's got plenty to do, you know, with regards to shaping the future. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure if, if he gets an opportunity, he'll be jumping at the chance. Um, you know, the way he trained today, you can see the hunger there. He's contributed in meetings uh, with regards to how he sees things. Um, so it's, it's been great. It's been great, really. Um, so, you know, hopefully we will see him uh, before the end of the season. And just finally for me, obviously, you mentioned the Lions there as well. And it is kind of a strange kind of end of the season. People of Ireland, Ames, uh, the guys going on the Lions. What are the Lions uh, guys, players like? Is there a focus now in these few weeks, even just gone to another level because they've so much to aim towards? Yeah, well, they've got to sort of approach each game as, you know, in a, in a truly professional manner because irrespective of if they play in for something or not, you look at the... The number of English players, for instance, that are still involved in Premiership playoffs and uh, etc. So they're all playing for something. Um, so the minute you sort of switch off, then you, you leave yourself open to injuries or a whole host of other things, really. So you can't afford to. You, you've just got to be working on certain little things, making sure that you're in the best shape possible um, for when that tour comes around. Um, so, yeah. You know they're uh, they're all in a good place. You know even doing a little bit of extra at the end of training, etc. Um, but as a group, um, they're all contributing here, and um, yeah, it's, it's just good to have them around. Um, my question really is: um, you, you've had two weeks off, um, and uh, generally, I suppose a two-week break is is usually good for uh, for the players and that. Um, is it hard to get guys motivated for the last? Sort of two games in the Rainbow Cup, you know, it's been such a long, strange season. Uh, or uh, how did they come back in? Yeah, no, they've been excellent. Um, you know, like I said earlier, we've used this, you know, as a window looking ahead. Uh, so as opposed to, you know, finishing the season and uh, and that's it, everybody goes away. We've actually got another couple of games to go. Um, so it, it's a different situation. It's a challenge that I'm hoping that we can... We can raise our game to against Glasgow, who uh, are chasing silverware. They're still in the hunt. Um, so it'll be a tough ask. So it's another challenge, and that's the way you've got to embrace it. You know, you've, you've just got to look at it as another challenge. Find out again about a little bit um, more about different people. Um, but motivation isn't an issue. I mean, there's plenty to play for. Like, you know, I'm repeating myself now, but, you know, we've got the, the Lions boys who want to give a good account of themselves, some of the Irish players or potential Irish internationals who are, who are looking to maybe gain international honours further on this season. So, there's, you know, there's plenty to play for. And, you know, here in, in Leinster, obviously, we're saying uh, farewell to a couple of good guys that have, that have been around for a while. And it's important we give them a good send-off as well. So that's a, a little bit of a different sort of sentimental view, but it's still important, you know, because it's, you know, they've they played a fantastic role in... in uh, this past period in Leinster's history, so they deserve that send-off. So um, there's plenty of motivation if you look for it, definitely. Okay, Robin, well, just to finish up, can you give us a word on uh, how much it means to the squad that they'll be able to finish out the season in front of fans next week? Yeah, I think it's it's brilliant um, to have the opportunity to play in front of a crowd. Um, it's been a tough. Slog for everybody, um, you know. 
Um, still counting ourselves as the lucky ones, really, who've been able to continue day to day, week to week. Um, you know, disappointed that we weren't able to give the fans an opportunity to come and support us in the final. Um, but hopefully we can do that in the last game of this season when uh, I think it's 1,200, isn't it, um, that are going to come. And uh, I'm sure they give us, you know, plenty of vocal support. Um, yeah, um, it's been such a long time now um, without having the fans there. It's been too long, really. So it'll be great to welcome them back. And um, again, that's motivation in itself for the players to give a good, good account of themselves. Uh, and sign off the season or, you know, if we've got another game, all well and good. But, um, yeah, to play in front of the home crowd would be great.